Hi, Carrie Rhodes here with Carrie Stamps. In today's video, I am featuring the Gable Favor box die. This is a one piece die set. You would take this die and cut it twice to create a Gable box. And the Gable boxes I am showing you today feature products from the collection called Follow Your Heart that FSJ released earlier this month. And so these are all fun boxes that you could gift to a girlfriend for Valentine's Day. I'm gonna be showing you how to make three different backgrounds featuring Distress Oxide inks. And then I'm also going to be using my Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers to color with. And when I color with these, I always use my Bristol Smooth Paper. So I wanted to show that to you because if you are into Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers, it's the best paper for them. If you haven't had good success with them, it might be because you're not coloring on the right paper and that's the right paper. So I wanted to show it to you. And for now, let's just stamp. Here we go. The first thing I want to show you in making today's projects is how to die cut the box using one eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock. You're going to lay the die in the corner so that the flap edge of the die hangs off about one eighth of an inch. Then you're going to run this through to cut out your first piece. Next, take the die and rotate it so that the flap of the die now hangs off the right hand side and it will be nestled up against the one you previously cut. This will give you your two pieces and then you'll have a little bit of cardstock left over that you can use to you make other pieces for this project. And here's the first box that we're going to be creating today with the Hey Girl stamp set. So let me show you how to put the box together. The first thing I did was fold on all of the crease lines that the die created for me. And you can see that the tabs, even though they were cut a little bit short, are big enough that I can go ahead and put glue and adhesive to put these together. So just fold on all the sides. I'm going to use some white liner tape on those flaps to put my box together. And then we just remove one and adhere it to the other using the score lines as a guide to line them up. I always like to go over that tape area with my crease tool to make sure it's gonna stick. So I just folded that in half and tucked that other piece that had the score tape in and adhered it to the box. Now we fold in the bottom, put some glue just in the bottom edge of those small flaps and then just the top part of this flap here. I realized I got the glue down a little bit too far. Then I close it up and make sure it's square and then use my crease tool to really press into that glue. And to make sure it stays, I put a little heavy acrylic block in there and just set it aside. All right, so for this background, I'm very excited about this. We're gonna be using three different Distress inks. The first one is Candy Apple, and actually these are Distress Oxide inks. So you can see I just started blending with my sponge dauber on the glass mat that I have there, and that just makes for a smooth transition as you move that dauber onto your paper. And it really removes the um, hard edge of the circle that you sometimes get when blending. And then we have the Seedless Preserves, color here. No, I'm sorry, this is Picked Raspberry. Picked Raspberry is the second color. And then we're going to move into the light pink here and blend that. That light pink is called Spun Sugar. And I'm just blending it in with the seed or the uh, Picked Raspberry and making kind of like a, what I like to think of as like a Valentine sky. And there we have it. And then we're gonna clean off all that ink. And I'm bringing in a water brush, a blending brush. And what I'm doing here is just drawing in or painting in some cloud shapes. So they're kind of with a mostly flat bottom and a fluffy top. And they're really thin, long clouds. And the Distress Oxide ink reacts with water. So if I paint it on and then I bring in my paper towel and lift off that part of the ink that has kind of 
re-moistened, it leaves a little bit of a lighter area. It's not all the way white, but it's a lot lighter and it has that kind of transparent feel of a cloud. I love this technique. I actually saw it on a video by Ashley Tucker and I just fell in love with this technique that she created and knew that I would have to use it. So this is the project today that I chose to use it on and I can see it'll be one that I would love to use again and again. So the paper towel really does that the little bit of magic that you need it to do by removing that color and revealing the cloud. And sometimes you just go back over the same shape again to remove more of the color and it just makes the most beautiful clouds. And the paper towel you I didn't show the paper towel, but it does pick up a lot of color. If you look at it, you'll see um, that you do collect some of the ink. Yeah, there it is. And there we've got some beautiful clouds. And there's another step to this we're going to do next, and that is to bring in a white gel pen and just accent the bottom of the clouds. With just some little lines. Um, kind of tracing the bottom of the cloud. Like I said, they're mostly straight with um, a little few curves here and there. And you want to make sure that your paper is dry for this part. The gel pen doesn't really like to work on a wet surface as much, so dry paper works good. You may even want to use your heat tool to dry off the paper if you were wanting to speed that up. And you can see it shows up a little bit better there on the darker colors with the, the pink and the red. And there we have our Valentine sky. So now we're going to stamp some images from the Hey Girl stamp set released in the Follow Your Heart collection by Fun Stamper's Journey. And I'm using black licorice ink on Bristol Smooth cardstock because I'm going to be coloring this in with my Zig clean color real brush markers and they work best on this paper. I also feel when stamping on this paper and I'm using an image that has some solid black areas, I do like to go ahead and stamp it a couple times to make sure that black area is nice and crisp and solid black. There she is. And then I'm also going to bring in the sky scene and stamp my sentiment on it while I've got my stamps and ink out and we'll use the Misty for that as well. That way I can line up the saying really nice in that corner and since I am stamping on top of an already inked surface I wanted to have the option to ink it twice if it needed that and since I did have the opportunity to do it I went ahead I thought if it dries a little bit lighter it would be best to have two coats of the black there but yeah, you wouldn't necessarily need a Misty for doing that. So here's my Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. I'm putting the colors up on the screen that I use for each thing so you can replicate the color combinations if you wanted. And I've um, sped this up quite a bit because the coloring um, took up a lot of the time in the video and I really wanted to be able to show you all three of the projects today. So. That's why I've sped it up so much, but I'm really just outlining um, with a darker color and then blending it in with a lighter color. This is um, pink and light pink that I'm using, and I just did all of the scooter, minus um, the metal elements, the parts that I feel would be like chrome, and then also kind of the seat cushion for where the dog is sitting. Um, so just, I tried it with kind of a combination of colors. The first time I colored in this image and I didn't really love that effect so I just stuck with um, one color for the scooter. And there's a little tiny bit of the scooter behind the dog that you don't want to miss coloring in. And then we're going to do her clothing with just some lighter pink. I really went for the pinks on this because I wanted it to have a real Valentine feel and kind of match the background. I colored in her skin. I have the Zig markers that I bought were a set of 80 colors. They have, I believe, 90, so I have a few more to 
fill in my set, but if you bought any of the different size sets, even a set of 24, these markers blend so beautifully with each other that you could blend and make your own separate colors and they now offer a blending brush so you can always outline with a dark color and then blend in with a lighter color. I'll be using that blending brush on the next box that I do which also has a little ducks and dog in it. I love this uh, pen so much that was the blue haze that I outlined the glass and the little envelopes with. And then a couple shades of brown for her hair and then I decided I would make the dog the same colors as her hair because you know that cute little thing that people say that dogs and their owners look like each other so I thought that the dog should match the girl's hair. So again just using a couple different shades of brown on that and blending them out with the lighter brown color. And then I brought in the red for very last because the first time I colored this girl in, I actually ended up smearing the red. I feel like the red is like a really thick pigment. And so you just wanna be careful not to brush your hand over it for a minute after you color with it. It just, it's smeared. And then this set does not have a die. So I am gonna cut it out. And you see there I cut off the envelopes. That's because the image as it stands I was not able to fit on the front of my box, so I cut them apart and then you'll see me paper piece some of them back in when I put the whole thing together. And I'm just turning my paper with my left hand and cutting with my right, and I found that that turning method works the best for me. So there she is, and then I'll cut out actually the three smallest envelopes is all I could fit on my little project. or I'll, that's how I liked it, was with the three smallest ones. All right, so our box is ready to go. We're gonna put the little top together just by tucking in those with uh, the little notches on the box into the side. And my glue's about running out, but I decided I would see if I could get it to work for the rest of this project. So I'm just gluing that on. Now this panel that I used to make the background is three and an eighth of an inch by three and a fourth. And that makes the perfect size that you have a little bit of edge there so that you have the pink showing all the way around. And I'm gonna mount that on with foam squares. I like quite a bit of foam squares because I don't like things to sag. I like it to be nice and sturdy, so. I know it's a lot, but it's the way I roll. And then we're going to put the envelopes on with just a dot of glue. I just put the dot of glue where I wanted the envelope to go, and then just laid it right on top. They're kind of small. If you had like a little tool that picks up gems, that might be nice to use right here. I'm going to be getting me one of those very soon. There we go. Then we're just going to add some embellishments. These little hearts are also in the from the or follow your heart collection that FSJ released. I just like they're like um, rhinestone or gems. They're like gems and nice red color. I thought they really added a lot to this box. And then we're going to make a little detail piece for the top of the box as well using the mini envelope die. I've already die cut one from whipped cream cardstock and I'm just going to fold on all the creases and then we're going to distress the edges since I outlined the little envelopes that are stamped with that blue haze I wanted this envelope to have that kind of detailing on it as well and then I'm just sponging over the edges of the envelope so all the edges have that blue detail. Just really light blue. And then we'll go ahead and clean off our mat and put this envelope together with a little glue. It only takes a little, it's a very small envelope. And I realized when I pushed it down right there, I squished a little of the glue out. So I brought in my adhesive eraser and just removed that glue. And then I wanted to use one of the other stamps 
from this set. They have like little almost conversation hearts. I think they look like them anyway. And I'm going to stamp that with Sweetberry, which is actually the same color of cardstock I use for my box. And this little heart says BFF on it. And so I'll cut that out. And I'm going to stick it to my envelope flap. And to do that, I'm going to use a glue dot. And I'm just going to try to stick it towards the top of that heart. And that way, the little bit of the heart that hangs over, it's not actually going to seal the envelope. And then I want to make an insert for that. And I use this envelope a lot, so I've written down the measurements for the insert on the packaging. And it's uh, 1 and 5 eighths by 1 and 1 eighth. I'm going to take that scrap from cutting out the box and use that to cut the insert. And then I thought it would be cute to go ahead and stamp on that. So I'm going to bring the stamp set back and use the set the sentiment that says, Hey girl! And then you could sign that little note or, you know, write love you or thinking of you or something short on there would be cute. But it's nice to have a little note in there. And then we're going to attach that to the box with a heart clip. You can see I love these. Mine are almost gone now. And we'll just clip that on. And that is our very first Gable Favor box. Perfect for Galentines, right? I love how much room is in these boxes. Perfect for a treat. The next box is our little dog house using the Valentine's Pals stamp set. And we're going to make our background using two different colors of Distress Oxide. It is tea stain or tea dye and ground espresso. So this time when sponging on the background, I'm gonna use a little back and forth motions, kind of like the direction that the wood grain will go and just going to kind of do stripes. So doing the lightest color first, and then I will come in with the ground espresso. That I might try holding it down with a paper towel so that I didn't get fingerprints in it. I had recently put on lotion, and so I didn't want to get my lotion on there and make a fingerprint. But it just doesn't work for me. I just have to use my fingers. So now we're coming back in and kind of blending in and filling in the rest of the white space with the darker color. And that's it, pretty simple. And once that's done, we're going to use a stamped image on it. Clean that off. And the stamp I'm using is actually from the company called Impression Obsession. They have these cover a card background stamps. This is a, a one of the wood plank ones. They have so many background stamps and a lot of different wood background kind. So I <laughs> love their stamps. I love their background stamps. So I'm inking that up with the ground espresso. Then I'm going to bring in my distress sprayer and spray that six or so times to wet that ink. And then I'm going to place my background on top of it and a piece of scratch paper over that. And then just because it needs to sit there for a little bit, I put a heavy block on it so it doesn't curl up or anything. So you want to give that about a minute. And then let's come back and check it out. And it just made that wood grain a little bit more distressed looking. And then you can see I'm picking up the wet ink. And then I heat set it real quick in case it was a little bit damp. So I could just move on and do the rest of my stuff with it. So I'm going to die cut a little door using a long rectangle die and when I put this on what I want is to make a door that's just big enough for the dog I'm going to put on there. So I kind of use the stamp as a reference for how high that door should go. I didn't need to cut the whole thing. So it's going to hang off and I actually I only want it to cut on two sides. So when I put this on my platform here I'm putting the edge of the die against the edge of the, or the edge of the platform, the edge of the plate against the edge of the die. So it's only going to cut on two sides. It's not going to cut on that portion that I 
did not cover with the plate. See there? And then I'm gonna take my ruler and lay that down and just fold that back where I want that to open. And then I've created a door. And then I'm gonna come back and sponge the edges with that dark espresso and also sponge around the door itself. It just highlights that edge so you can see that, that there's an opening there a little bit better and gives it a little more dimension. There we go. There's our background. Clean that off again. And then we can go ahead and put our box together. And I did have one or a couple little elements that I added to this box before I put it together. So I'm gonna do that when it's flat, which is much easier when you're stamping. So when you open the door, I wanted there to be a little surprise there. So we're gonna put our sentiment and we're going to emboss that. So I used my anti-static tool there. So once I do stamp this, the embossing powder is only gonna to stamp to my sentiment, which says, I woof you. And I put more on there because my stamp already had ink on it from stamping it before. So that's just clear pigment ink. And then I'm gonna cover it with white embossing powder. And we'll heat set that, buff it off. I did go in and erase the pencil line as well. And then I'm gonna do some more stamping here. And I thought since the creases were already folded on this box, I would tape it down to help it lay flat. It didn't work very good, but maybe I just needed to use more tape. So I am using that tea stain Distress Oxide ink. I love having a lighter ink show up on darker paper. So that's what I really loved for this element here, which I was hoping would kind of look like the roof tiles for the doghouse. And this string of hearts is also from that Valentine Pals stamp set that the dog's in. So that's my little roof element. I just heat set it real fast um, because the Distress Oxide ink also takes longer to dry. And then I'm gonna put the box together just like I did before. Crease, rubbing over those edges with my crease tool and then using glue to adhere the bottom. Pressing on that with my crease tool and letting it set with a block inside. And now we're gonna ink up that little dog. And I am again using Bristol Smooth cardstock so that I can color it with my Zig markers. And I put the colors on the screen for you. This is when I'm gonna bring in the blender brush. With this larger dog, I use the same colors I used on the small dog in the previous project, but since he is bigger, that light brown just was too yellow for this big area. So I decided that I would bring in some more of the mid-brown and use my blender to kind of blend those colors together so that he was more brown instead of yellowish. So you'll see me do that here next. So this is the blending brush. It's just a marker with no ink in it, no color. So it blends out really well. It's a, a really good thing to have if you have the zig. And then I just touch the tip of it to my brown marker so I could kind of fill in with some darker color when I just needed a touch of color. And again, I'm using just two shades of red for the heart, the same reds that I used in the previous project. It's carmine red and red. And I'm gonna use just the red for the nose and the tongue since they're so small. Then I brought in my light pink to give him a little rosy cheek. Now I'm gonna die cut this, but then I remembered, oh, I wanted to stamp on the little heart there. So there's two little sentiments in this set you could put inside this heart. One says love and the other is hugs. And I think I show the hugs here in a second that you could also use. So tape that down. Oh, there's the hugs. You could also use that one. So we'll tape this down and die cut it. I love uh, a die set with matching die or a stamp set with matching dies. Love that. 
There he is. So cute. And then he is going to get put on the door of this when we're done. So we'll go ahead and put it all together, gluing the door on, making sure not to put glue on the actual door element so that it can move freely. And this again is a three and one eighth inch by three and one fourth inch piece that I made my background on. And there we are with the foam squares. And then he'll just fit right on that door because I already measured it out with the stamp itself. So he fits on there perfect. Now I'm going to add some hearts. I'll put a link to this uh, die that I use to make these hearts on my blog post. I'll have all the products that I'm using to create these today on my blog post so you can see them all and you can click on them and shop for them if you like. So just a, it's just a, a, a die that has um, three rows of hearts and I use the dies more than I use the shape itself. So put our box together and close it and we're going to add this, look at this twine, I love it. It's super thick. It's called um, Tied Up With String. It's from the Christmas collection, but um, they still have it. And I love to use candy cane striped things after Christmas for Valentine's projects. And I thought it would be just the perfect pop of color. And I don't know, like a rope reminds me of like a dog leash. So I thought it would be cute here. And I have these super sticky uh, glue dots left over from a kit that were really big. So that's what I used to attach this. You could also use hot glue here. I like to just use up what I have sometimes. So there we go. And that way with the ribbon stuck to the box, then the person who gets it doesn't have to remove the bow to open and shut the box. That bow can stay on there. And it was a little too bulky to tie around the handle. So now I'm just covering each of the hearts with some sparkle silk just to dress them up a little bit. And I'm gonna come back in with my journey glaze and I'm gonna coat those hearts. So they're not only gonna be um, sparkly and have that shimmer, but they're gonna be glossy and have kind of that raised up. I had a clog there I had to clear out and then super quick and easy just to cover them. And that's the final detail for this box. I really feel like you have to put chocolate in this one, right? Well, there you have it. All right, next up is a fun box that has a galaxy background and uses this fun stamp set. So we're gonna be using three different colors. Again, we're gonna use that picked raspberry and you'll see me put in like blotches of color this time. And I don't know if I told you, but I'm also using the, the Bristol Smooth Paper to create the backgrounds today. Next, we're using the Dusty Concord is the purple color. And I'm trying to make this color pretty thick and saturated in each of the little areas that I'm adding it. There we go. And the next color is Peacock Feathers. Such a cool color. If, I mean, if you've seen my blog, you know this kind of color is my thing. Love it. All right, then we're going to come in with the black soot. And we're going to kind of blend this between all the colors. You know, it is a galaxy background, so we want it to be somewhat black. But I also wanted a lot of the color to pop through. So whenever I go over the colors, I'm really just doing like a light dusting and even leaving some of it completely untouched, but just kind of a light dusting of the black soot on top. Okay, we will clean off the desk and then we're gonna get real messy. So we gotta get that ink off of there. Now I'm just using the sprayer and squeezing the trigger halfway down and it makes those little droplets rather than a fine mist. Here comes the paper towel. Look at those splatters. So that's just the beginning of our galaxy. We want those kind of watermarks to create depth. Then I'm going to bring in some whipped cream acrylic paint. And 
I'm going to put this on the white part of my work surface. It's a silicone-like mat, a little water, and then a paintbrush to mix those together just to make it a little bit more fluid so I can make the white splatters. Now, I love a ton of white splatter because I want those big drops, but I also want those teeny tiny little splatters. They look far away. And then you can also use your paintbrush to kind of fill in and make little painted drops if you have an area that's just not getting enough splatter. So I'm gonna clean that off and then I'm gonna bring in some silk. This is a water-based sparkly product that FSJ has and I'm using five colors. So this is the white and then sparkle silk and then silver and it's, look at that galaxy coming to life. Then we have cosmic grape right? You have to use Cosmic Grape. <laughs> and then my favorite color, Cool Pool. There we have it. We're just going to let that dry. So I'm going to set it aside and clean that off. And then I'm going to stamp my gems. And the stamp set, there is an ATS. You saw it's that smaller size. And I love that because it um, it's really affordable. So you kind of get a you know, a lot of bang for your buck there. So I'm using the two shades of pink that I used on the scooter in project number one, pink and light pink for the gem. And I'm cleaning off my brush that I blend with in between if it gets too saturated with the darker color so that I can blend and get some of the lighter color to show up. Then we have turquoise green and shadow green for this diamond shaped gem. And it's just yummy. I love these colors. Love them. And they blend so beautifully together. Then we have two colors of purple, violet and lilac for the rectangle shaped gem here. And I'm just kind of giving a little dark to a few of the little spaces at a time and then blending it with that lighter lilac color. And then outlining the center and blending it in. And again, we're gonna fussy cut these, but they're really easy shapes to cut this time. But one thing I decided to do once I cut them out was to color the cut edge of them with a black marker because I am cutting right on the stamped line this time and doing that black marker on the edge just helps your eye not see that white edge. And maybe it's a little fussy, but I think it helps. So I'm sticking each of the gems to a post-it note pressing it into my clear pigment ink. And then I'm going to emboss it with clear sparkle powder. So I made this myself because I didn't have any embossing powder that had glitter in it. It's just two parts embossing powder, clear embossing powder, and one part of a fine glitter. I use sparkle dust from FSJ in mine. And then heat setting that, and then it's covered with glitter. I did that with all three of the gems. And now I'm going to take the scrap left over from die cutting the box and we're going to stamp the sentiment. You're a gem. And we'll emboss that with white powder. Also, I made sure to treat that with my anti-static tool very generously because white powder on black paper shows up extremely well and so I don't really care for any strays on there. Now this tempered glass mat, you can actually emboss your images right on it. It's not gonna hurt the glass at all. So I kind of like that on occasion. And then I'm gonna cut this out. It's not too detailed of an image, but if you're not a fussy cutting fan, you could always find a die to cut this out, an oval or some fun shape or a punch. And then we will go ahead and mount that onto another fun shape that we're gonna die cut. This is a Christmas die set, and I just really liked this particular shape. And I die cut it from vellum, and then we'll mount the sentiment to that. I have a little hard time with my tape on this one. There we go. And then I just use my grid to center that shape so that I can get my sentiment in the center. This is gonna get mounted with some foam squares and I'm only putting them behind the black so they don't show, but 
behind the vellum. And now we can put this whole thing together. So it's all dry. I decided to come in with my black soot and just dust the edges with a little bit more of that black to darken it up and really give it that galaxy feel. But I'm telling you, I'm in love with this background. The colors, I like the, you know, normally on a galaxy, we're only using white splatter, but the addition of those silks, I feel just really go with this project, really go with this stamp set with the gems. I feel like this is uh, one my girls are gonna love because they are in love with this TV show called Steven Universe. And all the characters from outer space have gems, like a gem in their middle of their hand or their forehead, and they're all called the names of these gems, sapphire, ruby, garnet. So my girls are all into that right now. So now I'm just gonna glue on my gems and have them just be kind of scattered on there. I actually had two of the diamond shapes, so that's why you see me gluing one and I have one to the side. And then we're gonna add some of these fabulous gems. They're the trendy, oh, trendy stones, I think, from the Follow Your Heart collection. Aren't they fun? They're so shiny and so fun. And then I'll just add some regular uh, rhinestones to kind of fill it in Add some more of that gem feel. And then I tried one of the bigger ones here and I didn't like it. So I came back for a smaller one. And there's our background all finished. Well, it's really our front panel now. So I'll bring back or bring in the black box. I already put it together before because you have seen me do two. And you can see I mounted my panel onto a purple piece that's Grape Fusion and it's just a three and a fourth by three and three eighths. I'm tying a piece of black sparkle ribbon. I thought this is like the perfect galaxy ribbon. It has like kind of flecks of glitter in it or shimmer. It's amazing. So it's perfect for this project. And then I am going to stick the ribbon to the handle again. I just really liked that, that the bow never had to come off. And using those giant sticky glue dots again. And then I felt like we needed something to highlight that ribbon. So I'm going to add a gem to the center. And I thought, why not put one of these super sticky glue dots on it? So there you have it. I just adore these boxes. They have a big enough front panel to decorate. And they're big enough to hold something good inside. And they are able to be made with one piece of paper. So here's another look. I kind of tried to video them so you could get the feel of the 3D of the box and not just a flat picture, but also get a good up close look at each of the panels. So there's our Galentine's box. Um, I will have a link to my blog post at the end of this video so you can check out all of these projects and you can get links to all the products I use and also hop along. This is part of the Creative Team Blog Hop for FSJ. And I thank you for watching. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so and then ring the bell so you'll know each time that I have a new video. Thanks so much. Happy stamping!